I don't have any coal mines or power plants on my layout. So how do I justify the movement of my coal trains? Stick around, I'm going to tell you how in this video. Hi everyone, I'm Roy Smith. In this video, I'm going to talk about the movement of coal trains on my layout. I'll do this by asking and answering a series of seven questions as if you submitted the questions to me. And I'm going to do this in order to break up my monologue into bite-sized pieces. Okay, let's begin by asking the first question. You often hear the terms empties in and loads out when talking about the movement of coal trains on a layout. What do the terms empties in and loads out mean? Model railroaders often put coal mines and power plants on their layouts. These mines and power plants are served by coal trains. Empty coal trains are brought to a mine for loading and loaded coal trains are brought to a power plant for unloading. Sometimes these coal mines and power plants are placed on opposite sides of a mountain or scenic divider to create the illusion of empties in and loads out. To create this illusion, loaded coal cars enter a power plant, pass through the mountain or backdrop, and then emerge on the other side as loaded coal cars at the mine. Meanwhile, empties go under the tipple at the mine and reappear on the other side as empties at the power plant. This technique was effectively modeled for the first time in Enscale on Model Railroader's Clinch, Clinchfield layout back in 1978. On that layout, an industrial spur went to a power plant as you see depicted here. From the power plant, hidden tracks connected to a coal mine on the other side of the hill. Empties and loads moved in opposite directions at the same time. Do you remember this Clinchfield layout? I certainly remember it. It had a big influence on an N-scale layout I built in the 1980s. Empties in and loads out can be an effective way to create the illusion that industries on a layout are being served by coal trains. Okay, next question. You don't have any coal mines or power plants on your layout, so how does the movement of coal trains work? Here's how. My main line is a continuous loop folded over on itself, and it is double tracked just like the prototype. A loaded coal trains run westbound, and empty coal trains run eastbound. These coal trains serve imaginary industries that are located off layout. It's a very simple process. Let me show you on a simple version of my track plan, which depicts the scenic portion of my layout. Trains wait in the staging yard, which is located under Green River. Then they enter the scenic portion of the layout, cross the layout, and re-enter the staging yard at the opposite end of the scenic portion of the layout. This creates the illusion that these trains are going from some place to some place to serve industries which are located off layout. It's a sleight of hand. Next, you mentioned your staging yard. What is a staging yard? A staging yard is a section of the layout where trains stay until they are needed for operations on the layout. In effect, they are off layout as long as they remain in the staging yard. Typically, a staging yard is not scenic. It can be constructed under the layout as mine is, or off to one side, or even in a separate room connected to the layout through a hole in the wall. Think of the scenic part of a layout as a theater stage. Trains are the actors and they wait off stage in the staging area until they get their cue to come onto the layout. This is my staging yard. 
It includes three stub-ended tracts representing Cheyenne, Wyoming to the east, and three stub-ended tracts representing Ogden, Utah to the west. In addition, there are two diesel storage tracks. My coal trains run on the two center tracks, which allow for continuous running. These two center tracks are critical to the movement of coal trains on my layout. Altogether, my staging track is 12 feet long, the upper and lower levels are separated by a clearance of 8 inches, and the two levels are connected by a helix at each end of the layout. By the way, I plan to convert those stub-ended tracks into double-ended tracks in the future, but that's a subject for a different video. All of this works just fine for me because industri industrial switching isn't very important on my layout. I am far more interested in yard classification, interchange operations, and running unit trains. Okay. What are unit trains? M my layout is a modern era layout, so trains run as unit trains. Uh, for that matter, so do my tank car trains and my covered hopper trains. My unit coal trains run what seems to be very long distances all the way from an imaginary coal mine or power plant somewhere off layout without any need to classify or switch out the cars in a yard along the way. In any unit train, all the cars carry the same commodity being shipped from the same origin to the same destination. Since unit trains normally carry only one commodity, all the cars in the train are of the same type. And on a layout, there is no need for individual cars and waybills since unit trains are not broken down or reclassified at a yard anywhere between their origin and their destination. So, why don't you put a coal train and power plant on your layout? Well, first, to me, it isn't very realistic for a mine or power plant to swallow up a whole train. I find it more realistic when a train disappears behind the hill or under a highway overpass. Second, having coal mines and power plants off layout adds to the illusion of distance between them. In my case, I'm modeling the high plains and vast expanses of southwestern Wyoming. There are very few small industries to be served along the way. And that's okay with me, because as I said before, industrial switching in end scale isn't my primary interest. And finally, uh, the Union Pacific serves a number of mines and power plants in Wyoming, but to the best of my knowledge, there are no mines or power plants on the UP's Evanston subdivision, which I am modeling. And next question. Can you tell us more about the coal trains and how they operate? It's easy to run coal trains continuously on my double track main line by dedicating one track to each direction. Uh, for example, a loaded coal train can travel westbound on main one, and an empty coal train can travel eastbound on main two without colliding. Uh, the two coal trains run in opposite directions, and they may be similar, but on my layout they don't have to be identical since I'm not trying to replicate the movement of a single train. I don't need my coal trains to be headed up by identical diesels and I don't need the same number of hoppers with the same road numbers. Stated simply, I don't need to have identical trains running in opposite directions because I'm not trying to replicate the movement of a single train traveling back and forth on the layout, first as a loaded train and then as an empty train. What's more, there is no need to synchronize the movement of loaded and empty coal trains on my layout. Both the loaded and the empty trains can be running on the scenic part of the layout at the same time. I prefer to use SD70Ms to pull my heavy coal trains. I have four of these SD70Ms so I can head up each train with two of them. Now, how many cars should I run on my coal trains? Well, on the prototype, 90 to 100 cars 
may be normal, but that many cars in a train exceeds the limits of most layouts, even in N scale. It certainly exceeds the limits of my layout. Right now I have a total of 40 coal porters. I can run 20 of them as loads and 20 of them as empties if I so choose. Okay, final question. What would you say in conclusion? What I'm suggesting to you in this video is simply this. You can have coal mines and power plants on your layout if you want to, but you don't have to have them in order to run coal trains. You can run loaded coal trains in one direction and empty coal trains in the opposite direction, and a staging yard creates the illusion of trains moving to or from destinations off layout. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Before you go, I want you to click on the red subscribe button down below if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, so that you won't miss any of my videos. And I want you to post any comments you may have in the comments section down below, because sharing our knowledge and wisdom with each other in this, in this way is one of the reasons why model railroading is the world's greatest hobby. Until next time then, thanks for watching and happy railroading.